On this historic week, I thought I should bring along a, an historic character, or at least a character. So I have the pleasure to introduce the histrionic individual himself, Brian White. How are you doing anyway? Well, it is an historic week, a historic week. All I know is without a ticket, it ripped me a new one. So it's a historic week as far as I'm concerned. I'm doing great other than that. Other than that. Yes, we <laughs> together, together, we don't have a single ticket. If you took a, yeah. us and a few others and a few others in our, in our like CERN and, and others that don't have tickets, but some of our, some of our people have managed to, uh, you know, find, find a ticket here or there. Yeah. The list of people on this side of the rope is very, very short. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an amazing event. Uh, historic. Don't know. Well, we don't know. We don't know because we can't know, but it's very exciting. So, you know, when you talk about over-promising and under-delivering or under-promising and over-delivering, man, Elon, set yourself up <laughs> saying in advance it'll be an historic an historic event. But, uh, you know, uh, he's now he's just got to deliver. That's all. It's true. I mean, Ishtar was historic. Maybe not for the reasons the producers envisioned, but it's all right. <laughs> Yes, it's true. All right, listen, I've got a question. I've got a couple of questions for you today. Oh, no. One we will, one we will discuss today and one we will discuss probably Tuesday uh, for, those, for those at home. Um, I am confused about the, <laughs> about the capacity at Austin. I mean, I know it's a mm -hmm. massive building. It's tall, it's wide, it's long. It has lots and lots of cubic feet of usable factory space. Right. All of this, but I'm still confused. So I think it was Jeff Lutz who told me last week that there's lots of room to build more vehicles. That's what he said. I think it was Jeff. Sorry, Jeff, if I misquoted you. But then make it... But my interest really got peaked last week when it was revealed that we are now producing 2,000 cyber trucks per week at Austin. And that this was one line and one shift. And the person that said all this said that there's a second line available. And of course, you can do four shifts. So I did a little math, and that would say that our capacity is 800,000 cyber trucks. And you say? So you, you gave me a lot there. We'll start at the top. Is the space big? Yes, very big and not full. In uh, July, Joe Tegmeyer had an opportunity to tour the factory. Not a friends and family tour. He got to do that as well. He got the VIP tour wow. where an executive says, where would you like to go? Let's walk. Wow. You show me. You tell me where you want to go and we'll go there. No cameras. And you cannot disclose any specifics about what you see. Only general stuff. This is background. And what he said is, there's a lot of space available still in the factory. So Jeff Lutz is correct. Okay. He's absolutely correct. Jeff Lutz is usually correct. Okay. Um, yeah. I. Uh, the higher floors, you've seen the construction method. It's concrete, heavy duty throughout in, in, in a lot of it. It is uh, still... It is a steel structure with concrete floors. You can put heavy stuff on high floors. You can't put stamping machines or casting machines, right, but right. anything else you can put up there. So all of that space is usable. They have a lot of it left. I don't know what percentage that would be, but even if it's 10%, that's a million square feet. You've got space. So that answers that part. The next question is, wait, 800,000 Cybertruck capacity? Uh, what say I? I say, yeah. Yeah, I've always said, yeah. I've always said the capacity of Cybertruck. Now, originally I'd said a million because uh, it was going to be origami exoskeleton structural mm -hmm. on on the, you know, skip the, the, uh, the unibody. Right. So the thing with the, so let's look at the production. Yeah, uh, 800,000. Uh, can they do it? Absolutely. I've always said it would be a million, but that was back when it was a simpler design, back when it was the exoskeleton, uh, before it had the complicated uh, uh, occupant home with all the stamped elements. 
But 800,000, that's only uh, 2,400 per week per line if you're doing four lines, one shift. So could they go even higher? Could you go, I mean, could it be a million or two? Uh, I don't know what the bottleneck would be, except maybe they need more doors heading out. Uh, I think you would run into logistics issues getting enough parts in to get past a million, but who knows? So yes, this is a simple design. It was meant to be quick and easy, and it looks like despite the added engineering challenges, it can be. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I was also thinking there could be upstream limitations in terms of things that are being built in-house. Uh, who knows? But, but let me ask you: when you saw, when you saw uh, the capacity. 250,000. What was your first reaction? Was it, yeah, that sounds about right. Or was it, hang on a second. Yeah, yes, exactly. No way, yeah. not yeah. a chance. You're gunning for the F-150 and you're telling me your capacity. I think that's a sandbag number. I think Elon learned a lesson about overpromising. And if you look at the production capacity out of Shanghai, you'll see that consistently they'll say, oh, uh, per, uh, capacity greater than 450,000. Wait, didn't you just do 520? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's greater than. Okay. Well, now, oh, well, now the nameplate capacity is meh, 700. No, it's not. No, it's, we're looking at the monthly numbers. We know it's much bigger. And I think we're seeing that precisely with Cybertruck. I see. All right. So then subject, subject number two related, my recollection, maybe sandbagging, is that the Model Y capacity was 500,000. I'm going to guess that no, the Model Y capacity in Austin is was also always more than 500,000. Is that what you were? Is that? Um, I don't know. We know that uh, capacity in Shanghai is well north of 500,000. It's probably six, seven. Uh, it's probably more like seven, seven fifty. If you look at the mix between three and Y out of Shanghai, if Shanghai can make seven fifty, why, why wouldn't Texas be able to make seven fifty? Well, because they've got space set aside for the, you know, in, in Austin, in Shanghai, they've got the Model Three, but in Austin, they've got the Cybertruck. Cybertruck's going to be a bigger producer, bigger use of space. Is it going to really take more space, more space than the Model 3? I don't think it will. Um, Model 3 line in China has, I believe, two lines. Uh, model, the Cybertruck currently has one, maybe two. I think there's room for a second. I don't think the second one is running yet, <clears throat> but it, it's a shorter line. So, uh, yeah, I think 500 is the low end. Um, what they're, What we don't have is sufficient demand for enough made in Austin model wise having four factories cranking out serious volume has satisfied the global market. It is number one when you're number one, there's only so much more you can go, but the price keeps coming down. And as it does, more demand is unlocked. And if the price stays the same, but the interest rates go down, more demand is unlocked. If the economy improves more demand, if, if people realize wait, this isn't a gimmick. This is the real deal. More demand unlocks. All right. Let's look at the Model Y lines in Austin the same way we just looked at the at the Cybertruck. Do we know, you just, do we know how many lines are set up, created for Model Y? And do we know what, how many shifts are being utilized currently? And do we know, and I'm sure we know, even though I've forgotten how many they're making in Austin right now, is it around 250? I don't remember offhand. I'd have to pull it up. Um, and I uh, I don't know how many shifts. The thing with the Model Y line is if it's anything like the one in Fremont, they don't call it a line. They don't, I've, they've tried to, <laughs> I tried to come up with a hundred analogies and they wouldn't say any of them were what it is. It's more of a, it's more of a flowing, it's like a lazy river of production, which helps me not at all. Um, so I don't, I don't know if we're asking even the right question on that, but my answer is two, two lines. Two lines. Okay. And so yeah, probably, two lines and probably one shift each. Um, yeah. So I, but I don't know. So they probably have a, I think it's around 250 at Austin right now. So I'm guessing that they have uh, substantially more capacity there. All right. So then that raises the issue number three. So the 2.5 is going to be made on those same lines. Is that correct? The, say that again. The what? 2.5. The right. The, well, presumably, 
presumably. Um, it is also possible that they would uh, step up the line in Austin to deliver all North American vehicles, shutter the line in Fremont, take the time to upgrade it there and do the 2.5 there instead. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So that would be the 2.5, which we're going to guess is going to do quite well, probably uh, maybe on the same order uh, out of Austin. Or Well, let's just say if it's 250,000 right now for Model Y, we would certainly be shocked if we didn't do at least 250,000 of these of these uh, less intermediate, yeah. small, slightly yeah. smaller Ys. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, then that leaves, of course, the cyber cab. So in addition to all of that. <laughs> do they have room? The answer appears to be yes. There's Here's extra the, yeah. space. So, There's but, extra space. But there with the cyber cab, we're talking about if they did less than 400,000 a year, people would be like, what? Um, so are we looking at enough space to do another 400,000 or maybe even more than that? <laughs> well, yeah, I can answer that for you. What is the design? It's uh, supposed to be the unboxed. Uh, so what I've heard is that it's going to be almost unboxed, almost. not quite, not quite there. But the the answer is we we can't. No one can give you more than a guess until we know what the design is. Yeah. I believe the design is going to be very simple, simpler than the uh, Cybertruck. Right. Uh, it's going to draw lessons from the Cybertruck, make something simpler, and if they're able to do that, then. You don't need a huge line and they don't need to go straight to 400,000. This line can be a proof of concept and then they can build it elsewhere. They can build. And by elsewhere, I don't mean instead. I mean, they can do what, like they did with the model Y and build it everywhere, or they can do like they did with the model three and build it on two continents. So it's plenty possible. And uh, on the intermediate compact, that's an item that would likely sell well in Europe. Uh, Giga Berlin has excess capacity. They could absorb right. some of that that way mm -hmm. and do you do you expect the 2.5 to be made in uh, china as well uh yes yes i do i don't know how that would work because they're already at capacity so i i don't know i don't know i think what they would do is uh whichever one has the greater margin is the one that they would want to build more of mm -hmm. and i think the I think anything they make would cannibalize existing sales to some extent. There are people who want the uh, the form factor of the Model Y, but maybe they don't want all the bells and whistles. Maybe they don't need as much trunk space. I don't know what the difference is going to be, um, but there are some people who would definitely buy the less expensive one. But if the margin is still good, who cares? Okay. Well, you mentioned- And the real margin, the real margin, Randy, isn't in the car. It's in, no. it's in, it, it, it's yes. in the autonomy. So it doesn't matter what the, it, you know, well, yeah, but 20% of 50,000 is better than 20% of 30,000. That's true. But the real money is the hundred bucks a month. Right. Say, of course. And the, and the, even the FSD package itself with a hundred dollars a month or the package. Yeah. Either and, one. Or, and or the robo taxi revenue. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. All right. So you mentioned the word uh, cannibalize and, uh, as much as we both agree that it doesn't really matter if we can make 3 million of something in Austin, okay, just make them. Um, but I've been putting out the idea and I've been developing this idea for two weeks and it's been, it's been evolving. And I don't think you and I have ever discussed it. My current version is that the, that the, the cyber truck is cannibalizing the entire U S automobile market. Ooh, Maybe. Okay. So let's, let's take some, some easy examples. S and X, I'd say it's absolutely cannibalizing those, but F-150 may be uh, unseated as the number one pickup, the number one vehicle in the, in the country for the first time in 37 years as a truck, 40, uh, as any vehicle, 42 years as the, as just the truck. Uh, this is clearly happening. This is clearly something that's that it's taking sales from. Anybody who wanted to get something really flashy, really showy, just got this. Um, celebrities, uh, realtors, uh, uh, anybody who wants a rolling billboard, just bought one. Yeah, so I'm looking at, you know, we keep thinking it's 2 million people waiting for these trucks. And so these 2 million people who can afford I mean, at this point, I don't think anybody's expecting it to be under 60,000 for years. 
So the people that are sitting there waiting for their $60,000 truck are folks that have uh, the ability to go out and buy a forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar um, Chevy. What are they even called anymore? I've lost track. Silverado, brand. Silverado, or not just a truck, uh, an SUV, a uh, you know any other car. They could you know they. So no matter what you're in the market for, if you have put in your reservation, what you might have been in the market for, if there was no such thing as a cyber truck, no matter what it was, it could be a compact. It could be a, um, a, a, a my, my kids love those uh, minis, you know, they, oh, don't, yeah. they don't anymore, but for a while there, that's what they wanted, you know? So, and I'm talking about boys, not girls. I'm talking about my, my, my male, my male children love the minis. So um, I don't my, care. Yeah. My, yeah. my postal children feel the same way. The thing is uh, 2 million reservations. Yeah, but uh, the fact that they went through the whole list means there isn't two million. No, of course not. It means there's not two million at a hundred, hundred and twenty oh, grand. Right. Now that we're dropped to eighty, um, you should be able to get that seventy five hundred dollar credit. It doesn't show up on the U.S. Uh, IR, on the IRS's website yet uh, as a point of sale eligible vehicle. Doesn't mean it's not eligible. Check with your accountant. So that means the truck is actually seventy two five, right? right? Mm -hmm. 60 grand in 2019 adjusted for inflation. I just checked $73,257. It's less than that. The truck is less than yeah. the price we expected adjusted for inflation for the dual motor configure. No, I guess that was the cyber beast. That was 60, wasn't it? It's close. It's close. Yeah. So at 80,000, 72,5, whichever you're going to see a lot more demand. Still not 2 million vehicles. It's not going to be the full two, but sure. new orders are showing up. Sure. A lot of people are buying it that weren't on the list because they're willing to pay that premium. We're going to see that at 80,000. And I think within the next three to six months, we'll get an idea of just how long that list is. But I'm going to guess it's pretty long. I'm going to guess it's over a year, probably three or four, uh, based on today's rates of production. But it won't be three or four because the rate of production is going to continue increasing. And as it does, the cost of goods sold continues to fall. And then the margin improves, the price goes down again, and away we go. So my, so again, my theory is that those people are waiting. So yeah. some of those, let's call yeah. it a million of them, only a million, we'll say, are actually sure. waiting. They're sitting there going, I want my Cybertruck and I'm not going to buy another car. Whatever I would have bought. I'm not going to buy. And one of the things they might have bought would have been a Model Y. And so I'm thinking that the Model Y got Osborne this year by the Cybertruck. And mm. uh, that this could be a major reason why we didn't get the increase in the United States on the Model Y that we normally get. There, You know what? Entirely possible. There are, there are people who were due for a new car who, who, would have gotten a Model Y if a Cybertruck didn't exist, uh, but it does. So yeah, I think uh, I think you're you're right on right on that too. Unfortunately, I know, I know, I have I know to it's hard it. for you. To, I know it's hard for oh, you. To say. Just it just hurts it's deep down say. inside. <laughs> oh, it feels like a stuck chicken bone. <laughs> so, so all right, though you've now you've now unconfused me. I mean, how, how much better can it be than to spend twenty minutes with a friend and feel so you know, not only feeling unconfused but also that I was right. I mean, in in the same conversation, he's gonna rub it in you guys. <laughs> he's never gonna let let this one go. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let this particular episode go. Brian, as always, great to hear from you. We'll be back tomorrow. It's true, almost certainly. And uh, if to all of you out there, it's been great. You know what? what uh, wait, one more thing. Oh, yeah. Let's get in the habit. One more thing. One visit, more thing. Visit, even though he they won't let him go to any events, you should go visit him on his website. Yeah. I know his website, his, his YouTube video, and, and you should visit him on Patreon and you should visit him on X, follow him everywhere he goes, because it's just, you know, he needs some love. Some I need validation, you guys. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's been great talking to you.